Welcome to module four, building relationships with lenders. So what are we going to cover in this module? We're going to start with talking about how lenders vary. And if you go back and read the lending landscape document from the first module, you'll get a lot more detailed information about that. And we'll talk about the, the value of understanding a lender's requirements and how, once you understand all that, how you can become a trusted referral partner to the lenders in your region. The good news is that although lending is a rather technical arena, and I think we needed a 16 module series to cover a lot of the topics, lending is still really based on relationships and you can develop relationships with the lenders in your region, even if you haven't mastered all the technicalities and become a trusted referral partner. So first thing is no two lenders are alike. And I wish we could give you a very simple checklist that applies to all lenders, but that's just not the reality of how lending works. Every lender is different. So we're going to get you enough information that you can adapt to the lenders in your region. Even mission-based lenders who I've worked a lot with CDFIs throughout the country, everyone I worked with had a slightly different approach and criteria for how they did underwriting and lending. The other thing that happens is you can get to know an institution and for some reason, that lender changes over time. Leadership changes, economic circumstances change. You might have to go back and figure out where that lender is at after time has passed. Quality referrals matter to lenders, though. They really do. Every lender I've ever talked to would tell you that a quality referral is more important to them than anything. So if you're somebody who can be feeding good referrals to a lender, they will love you. And this requires you to learn just enough about who they are and how they do things so that you can become that trusted advisor. So in order for you to play this matchmaking role, you need to think like a lender, or know, at least know how a lender thinks. So let's look at what's inside a lender's head. They need to meet their institution's five C's when they look at a project, and we'll give you more information about that. They need accurate financial documents for showing historical or in some cases projected cash capacity. They need to match deals to the products that they have. Every lending institution has certain products that have all kinds of criteria and structure. They're doing their own matchmaking internally between the applications they see come in the door and what products they have available to them at their institution. They need to satisfy shareholder or funder expectations, whether they're a nonprofit or for-profit institution. They are answering to somebody who's providing capital to them. They need to stay aligned with their state and federal regulations. Again, every lender out there, except maybe some online lenders, have uh, regulations they're responsible to adhere to. They need to mitigate risk and be profitable to some degree. And they're less interested in the story and more interested in the numbers. And I say that because, again, if you're working with young or new business owners, I've worked with many who are so enthusiastic about their product and their service, and they want to just talk about how everybody and their brother needs their product or service, you need to help them understand that a lender really needs to look at the numbers. And you can talk a little bit about your enthusiasm for the business, but you're going to have to move your client over to addressing a lender's headspace around the whole number side of the business and the application. So a little more here about how to think like a lender, or understand a lender's perspective. Relationships still matter to lenders, even though technology is coming in on all sides for all of us. But lenders can't tell you everything. They are going to have criteria and requirements that are happening in their institution that they can't exactly tell you about. For example, they will have things like portfolio concentration limitations. I worked with a lender once who... I think they told me something like 48% of all their defaults were in the restaurant business at one point, and they had to just put a moratorium on lending to restaurants because they were overly exposed in that area. There may be state regulations or other kinds of regulations that just prevent them from considering certain types of deals at certain times. Lenders really do need to get paid back, and they've all been burned at some point. If you're watching this and you haven't been a lender yourself, you might think, boy, these lenders are so picky and they say no to so many things. But once you have been a lender and you have gone through some defaults, it changes you. And I've seen every lender that I know readjust their criteria and their process based on defaults. And that's how they end up deciding what qualifies for a loan. Becoming a trusted referral partner to a lender will work better with small banks, credit unions, and CDFIs because they have a local 
focus. This is going to be hard or maybe even impossible to do with fintech and some of the big national banks because you can get to the decision maker. You can start a relationship and, you know, actually make an appointment or have a phone call. And this is how you create a win-win through mutual understanding. And I suggest starting small. Don't expect maybe to build this relationship in one meeting or one luncheon. It's something you might want to cultivate over time. Also, another way you can get information out of them is share information, be reciprocal. If they're willing to open up to you, open up to them. Focus on lenders who are invested in a referral process. There are institutions that incentivize this kind of relationship building in the community and others that don't. And it's pretty evident right away when you start to talk to some of the loan officers. And of course, give it time. Be willing to take a few months to develop these relationships. So don't assume lenders know all about you either. So one of the things you can do in this building a relationship process is make sure they understand what you do and what you offer and how you prepare clients for the loan process and how you're willing to go back and forth with a particular deal so that you can build a stronger package. Or perhaps you could say to them, hey, if you get a decline, if there, you get a loan package that you have to say no to, send them to us and we'll see if we can improve that package so you can get to yes. So be sure to promote yourself and make them aware of how much business development work you do with clients because that will interest them in getting these qualified deals that every lender wants. So in building relationships with lenders, it's this process of getting to know each other and then working with your clients to help them get through the door and get a yes. So if your clients are new to this process, helping them prepare by taking small steps. Do they have a business and a personal checking account? If not, help them set that up. Maybe introducing them to some of the bank management. There's lots of ways you can do some preliminary work before the loan application to help prepare your clients to be better positioned to get a yes from that institution. And train your clients on how to provide a narrowly focused presentation highlighting their capacity on cash, credit, and collateral so that they are thinking like a lender too, right? So that they start to have some of this information about what a lender needs to see in order to say yes. So that's the end of chapter one of this series. I look forward to seeing you in chapter two, Underwriting Basics, and our next module is number five, What is Underwriting?